Hi there. My name is Eugenie Burridge. I'm the facilitator for today's conversation and represent the product marketing team for Outlook across Windows, Mac, and mobile. I'm joined today by a host of experts, and we're here for you to answer your questions about Outlook in the area of time management, mobile productivity, and Outlook's place in the Microsoft 365 suite. As this is likely not your first Ask the Expert session this week, I don't need to remind you how important it is to stay respectful for, with your questions and in your conduct in chat. But I suppose I just did. In the event you need any clarification, the details are here and we do honor the Microsoft Code of Conduct. It's my pleasure to introduce the folks who are here online with me today on hand to answer your questions. We have Dave Myers, Principal Program Manager, who has broad purview across Outlook, especially in the service back capabilities on Outlook on the web. Victoria Rodriguez, our resident expert in time management and scheduling across all Outlook endpoints. Sri Ramya Malipudi, Senior Program Manager for Outlook Product Team, and she focuses on connected experiences, particularly between Outlook and Teams. And then Ross, Principal Ross Smith, Principal Program Manager for Microsoft Endpoint Management, with focus on Intune for data protection and app configuration. But we're not alone, actually. How we have a host of other Microsoft and community experts at the ready to answer your questions as you post them in the chat. So let's turn now to, to your questions. I see that there is a question about delegates and calendar. Um, so uh, Victoria, why don't you introduce yourself and maybe you could address this question. Um, that with the changes that are coming in Microsoft, are they going to take a harder look at delegation? In its current form, delegation is a roadblock. At best, it takes uh, too long to update multiple delegates. At worst, it, it's hard to, um, even though they would have appeared necessary permissions. Yes, awesome. Hey everyone, my name is Victoria. Happy to take this question. Um, so delegate shared calendars is really a priority for us at Microsoft and the Outlook team. Um, we understand there are issues that are still ongoing and we have very high metrics to make sure that we can solve these issues and make sure that we can provide the best experience. We actually have a pretty big engineering team um, dedicated to this effort this year where we want to bring our reliability to 99.9% .9 and make sure that you're not seeing these bugs anymore. So yes, it is top priority and your feedback is always welcome. So, you know, continue to share and continue to uh, create the support tickets when anything goes wrong so we can go ahead and dig deeper and make sure that we're, um, we're doing our best job there. Thank you. Thanks, Victoria. So, um, I want to turn it now over to, to Dave. Um, so Dave, you were with Lynn Ayers, our VP for Outlook, um, and did the demos for her session. Um, you demoed a lot of really cool capabilities. Based on your understanding of customer problems, is there a particular feature that you felt was really going to help customers out? Yeah, thanks. Um, one of the features that I really like was uh, search answers. It's a way to get you uh, exactly what you need in a very quick, uh, easy way. I think um, you know it's pretty great. The first time that I had a you know perfect experience with it was when a few months ago when I was uh, getting ready to do my taxes. I went and looked for the benefits email where it's going to be the W two. Just search for W two, and instead I got a link directly to the site that I needed to go to to download it. And I think like those are some of the nice like special ways that Outlook and search and AI can all come together and get you exactly what you need quickly. Excellent. Thanks. I see a question came in um, about tasks and it asks, uh, could you please explain what happens to the Outlook tasks and how it will look like in the future? And I actually can take that question. Um, 
tasks is is something that is connected to the Microsoft 365 substrate. And so with tasks, um, whether or not you create that task by flagging an email, um, whether you're in Outlook Mobile and you can create it from an email or um, uh, or even uh, within your search landing homepage, whenever you create that task, that uh, synchronizes with the tasks in Microsoft 365, and those tasks can be managed through your to-do app. Um, so we are looking at tasks across all of the Microsoft 365 experiences and being able to uh, synchronize those to, to manage them uh, in to-do. And that also is integrated into uh, the Teams experience. And so I'll just turn to Sri, who um, may have some additional uh, context to provide in, in the task management area. Thank you, Eugenie. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Shri. And as far as tasks go, Eugenie, you are right. Um, we are um, developing a lot of integrations and tasks is part of it. Um, in addition to tasks, um, I also saw somebody was um, asking about sending to teams because once we have um, shared to teams, things like tasks, emails uh, and whatnot, anything you have in Outlook, it will be easier for you to send to teams. Um, as far as the timing of that feature goes, um, we know that this is a top ask from you all and thank you for your patience. We are working on last um, performance issues that we have uh, with the current plugin and we are hoping that we could release the feature very soon to you. Great. Well, while we have you, Sri, I see another question here about how um, to recommend organizations direct people to use different apps when messaging. Um, the question says, sometimes people use Teams while others Outlook. And I find sometimes the Teams messages give the impression um, that it's more important. Um, want to give some organization on the how, when to use Teams versus Outlook versus Yammer. Did you want to take that one, Sri? Sure. Um, this is a great question and we almost get asked this in every customer session that we go to. Um, so you are not alone and we are working on this uh, as our highest priority. One example feature that we are building that will make this much easier for you all in your daily work is we are introducing a feature called embed chat, which means if you're in Outlook, you're uh, going through your inbox or working on your emails, you don't have to context switch to understand or be aware of what's going on in your teams. We will have have a chat in uh, uh, option um, in our uh, suite header or hub header in Outlook, which means you will get notifications there for your unread chats. And if you wish to see what they are, you can click on them and get a peek of it. And you can still continue with your email. Uh, you don't have to switch apps. So we are hoping that this will help you with your productivity. Great. Um, I also just for a little bit extra context, you know, we think about teams as your hub for teamwork and um, and uh, whereas you look at Outlook and that really is a space for you to do your personal organization and, and that is the guidance that we would uh, talk to customers about. There is um, a place for teams and a place for Outlook and when you're going to use one versus the other, that might change and you have the opportunity opportunity to take, for example, a, a conversation you're having in Outlook and when it really looks like you need to have it as a group, you can uh, in Outlook on the web, for example, share that conversation to Teams. There are also opportunities within Teams to take something and share it uh, uh, in an email thread. So we are building those um, integration points so that there is a natural evolution of your conversations between these applications applications, one for your personal organization, the other for your teamwork. So, um, so Ross, I was uh, wanting to introduce you and talk about um, a little bit about data protection. So, you know, just simply, what are the best ways for uh, companies to protect Outlook data on the variety of devices that are out there? Hi, sure. So uh, there are a number of ways that you can protect uh, Outlook data on on the various different devices that that you may be utilizing. So on uh, Windows 10 devices, for example, you'll want to 
employ BitLocker encryption to protect uh, the disk drives and thus the Outlook data at rest on those devices. On mobile devices, you would want to leverage uh, either uh, if you're enrolling the device, uh, the device-based encryption, or if you're not cho choosing not to enroll the devices, you could leverage Intune app protection policies to encrypt the Outlook data specifically. And then likewise with Mac, you can use File Vault and other technologies to encrypt the data on those devices as well. Great. Thanks, Ross. And I see a question here from Lisa and asking about uh, Project Mocha. Um, Dave, did you want to speak a little bit about where we're, what our current thinking is around Project Mocha and, um, and the question specifically, you know, will Outlook Spaces Project Mocha be available to enterprise education government? Yeah, thanks. That's a great question. Um, Project Mocha is a pretty cool thing for anyone who hasn't uh, gone and checked it out. It was recently released as a preview. Um, it's a pretty cool way to kind of manage all of your um, different things and a new way to look at time and projects. So I definitely recommend going and checking it out. Um, it's a fairly new thing. So I think like we're still in the experimentation iteration phase, but we're really excited about it. And I believe right now we've released it for EDU already, so the education sector. And yeah, I think, you know, as we continue to iterate, it's important for us to shorten the gap going into some of these sovereign clouds and enterprise or government um, scenarios. And so I think like we'll see those things moving faster, like Lynn mentioned. But right now, I think we're still kind of in the phase we want to make sure it gets right. And then we'll look at providing that value to all customers. Great. Thanks, Dave. So I see a question here from Fernando um, and talking about being in a global organization uh, and needing to switch languages. And so um, we definitely recognize the importance to that. And, and just this week, we have announced for Outlook for Windows that we are bringing Translator um, to, to bear. We have um, trans Microsoft Translator uh, available as a standalone um, application, but we are bringing it to uh, Outlook for Windows. And with that, we'll be able to immediately to automatically recognize if you're receiving emails in different languages. And then you have a variety of different options to, um, to do the translation of, of those emails um, that we're building natively actually into the Outlook for Windows experience. So there is a blog available um, in our tech community on Outlook uh, that speaks to the capabilities that are coming soon with translation. Um, OK, so Ross, I have a question here about the roadmap for enforcing sensitivity labels in Outlook Mobile. Did you want to, to take that one on? Sure, so uh, today we currently support sensitivity labels in Outlook Mobile uh, for uh, users to be able to assign uh, for uh, their various needs based on the type of policies you deploy within your organization. We're in the midst of focusing and uh, completing our development work for supporting mandatory sensitivity labels. Uh, which will then address, I believe, your specific concern around enforcing a particular label uh, during uh, composition scenarios. Great. Um, so I, we have a question here um, about, I think it's going to tasks again. So, um, Shri, did you want to uh, address this one? It's we use the downloaded version of Outlooks uh, due to integration with other third party software. Will tasks and other new features continue to be used from Outlook? We're starting to use Teams more, but Outlook is really our primary starting point. So thank you. Um, so looks like the question is if they can use tasks from Win Outlook Win32 um, and while we are integrated with Teams. is um, So assuming that is the question, the answer is yes. Um, we Once you have tasks integrated into your Teams, um, you should be able to use it 
um, from um, Teams app. And we are, while we are developing a lot of email integration features with Teams, um, there are none that we have planned yet for tasks uh, from um, Outlook yet. Uh, but you should be able to use the tasks from Outlook and they should sync seamlessly with your Teams as well. Great. OK. Um, so Victoria, um, I know we've been doing a lot of research um, and hearing customer feedback um, in terms of how people uh, manage their time. What are some of the recent learnings um, that uh, you've come across that have been really most surprising to you? Hey, that's a really good question. Um, so recently with the pandemic and you know the, the situation that we're currently in, um, we've been noticing how our customers, our users are starting to block their calendar for big chunks of time to do things like homeschool within the their normal quote unquote working hours. So what we used to know as working hours is not really true anymore, right? The, the normal nine to five, there's all these things that happen in between. And so it's really interesting how people are trying to organize their calendar with all that personal time um, that has to now really be one view. Um, and, and that's really interesting for us because now we're trying to understand how do we make that easier for everyone and how do we provide an experience that allows you to block your time but not make your calendar feel like you just have so much going on. Um, I know it can be a, a bit overwhelming for myself as well. So we, that that's a new thing really that um, we are not new, but something that we've been seeing more and more now through, during the pandemic. OK, great. And then so Dave, um, you know, Outlook on the Web is where we often release the, our intelligent features first. Um, is there a feature that you've worked on that kind of stands out from uh, from the others as being really the most progressive feature? Maybe one that sets Outlook apart from other email and calendar apps? Yeah, great question. Uh, I think one of the ones that I really like that is pretty unique is Meeting Insights. Um, that really kind of pulls together mail and calendar and also the integrations with OneDrive and SharePoint and everything else and gets you exactly what you need right when you need it. You just hop over to calendar and you can see the pre-read right there. And I think that's um, truly special. That's pretty unique compared to other um, apps out there. Yeah, I actually use that one all the time. Helps me show up to my meetings prepared, right? Yep. Um, great, thanks so much. And Ross, we have a question here on security. Um, is there a best practice for securing Outlook for Windows or Mac that matches mobile via Intune to restrict the ability to um, install, sync, or wipe mail data separate from attachment IRM um, from a BYOD computer? So currently we cannot restrict a user's ability to install Outlook and then use their credentials to set up leading to a full copy of their mailbox on personal devices other than using IP filtering. OK, um, so uh, Intune app protection policies today are limited to mobile based devices uh, for the broader uh, ecosystem for desktop class devices like desktop uh, Windows 10 and Mac devices. This is where uh, you'll want to utilize uh, a multitude of things. Azure Active Directory conditional access can be used to enforce uh, a modern authentication capable client like Outlook on the device. Uh, device enrollment can be used to enforce that only certain types of devices can be enrolled. Uh, and then you could use app based session controls within conditional access to uh, limit what can be accessed from a personal device that isn't enrolled uh, on Outlook on the web. For example, you can block the ability to print or download attachments. And then, of course, obviously with enroll devices, just to complete my train of thought with enroll devices, you can actually um, also use the Windows 10 security baselines to help further protect uh, and limit what can be done on those uh, devices. 
Great. OK, thank you. Um, so Victoria, we've got a question here about uh, work and personal calendars. Um, the uh, uh, person has said any thoughts about the splitting of work and personal calendars? So if somebody leaves the company and their device is wiped, that they still have their personal appointments. They need to be um, added to the work calendar to block time, but our, uh, but our personal appointments. That's a really great question as well, um, and I find that really interesting. So <clears throat> I'd like to expand a little bit on that and ask, ask the question back to the audience, um, how you would feel if your personal calendar was integrated in Outlook. Um, so if you were able to add your personal calendar via, if you use uh, Outlook.com email or any other provider, um, and the reason why I asked that question is because you can actually do that today. Uh, you can go in and add your personal calendar and then your personal events will overlay your work events. And so that means that if someone is trying to schedule a meeting with you, they will actually see that you are busy at 2 p.m. They won't know what, what you have going on at 2 p.m., right? It's just a private event but it still gives you that ability to separate that work and personal calendar so that if you do leave the company, you still have your own uh, personal email with your own personal calendar that will roam with you wherever you go. So I, I suggest trying out that feature. Um, you can try it out on Outlook Web. That's great. Um, so Dave, I have a question here. Um, when do we get the sweep feature in desktop outlook i'm not actually familiar with that sweep feature are you uh yeah so sweep feature was actually something that originated in the hotmail outlook.com space that we brought over to outlook for web um, and it essentially allows you to go in and say all mails from a particular sender or something you can move it to a folder delete something like that it's a pretty cool way to kind of do a a one-off cleanup of your mailbox. Um, I don't have any details specifically on when it will come to Outlook Desktop, but I think uh, as Lynn mentioned yesterday, a top priority for us is making sure we have cons consistent, coherent experiences across all of the Outlooks. And so it's definitely something that we're looking to make sure that, you know, regardless of the big screen, you have those capabilities. Um, so yeah, we should look forward to it coming sometime in the future. Just don't know exactly when yet. Great. OK, and Victoria, I think you got a little bit of feedback here. It says, honestly, I prefer my personal calendar be separate, but sometimes I add personal space to my work calendar. So I think you, you might get some feedback here. Um, OK, so one of the questions coming up here uh, is with regards to Outlook Mobile. And so, Ross, maybe you can help uh, take this one. And the question is, uh, any plans to make the gals searchable from Outlook Mobile? Um, some corporations ask that question. Sure. So Outlook Mobile, both on iOS and Android platforms today, supports the ability to search the global address list. You can do it during message composition. You can even do it through the uh, integrated search experience on the search tab, um, what we refer to as our zero query search experience. Um, so if there's a specific issue you're seeing where you're not able to search, we definitely would recommend opening a support case on that topic because that is a P0 item for our, our experience. Great, okay. Um, and Sri, um, with the extended remote work situations, uh, most of us are actually uh, using both Outlook and Teams for work uh, concurrently. What are some of the key improvements that we can expect to see in terms of those uh, integrations to help productivity? That's a great question. Um, so with extended work from home situation, we hear that people um, lose um, the collaboration that they have with hallway chats and you know just in office and in open space uh, communications um, without having to you know formally schedule a meeting with their colleagues. So to improve things like that, we are uh, bringing some features like Meet Now, which is an instant call, um, and making calling options more prominent from Outlook. 
So you don't have to formally schedule a meeting, but um, you can choose to call your colleagues and check, check in on them or ask a quick question. There are also some of um, the features that we are working on, like you are working on an email and it's going back and forth. And if it was a hallway conversation, it would be easier for you to solve. So for scenarios like that, we are bringing uh, chatting with about an email. Uh, for example, if you have an email, we have options like chat about this email or call, make a quick call. Um, all of this integrated with Teams and uh, we will have these options in Outlook so you don't have to context switch um, or even get distracted from the current context. And we have a lot more features coming in, uh, so please stay tuned. Uh, we have a lot of exciting features between Outlook and Teams coming up. OK, great. Um, oh, the question that I, I had here. Um, so I've got another um, another question for Victoria. Um, can you add the personal calendar feature to the Outlook client or only on the web? What's our plan for Outlook for Windows? Yep, good question. So uh, right now you can only add it in Outlook web and have that overlay effect that I mentioned uh, with your free busy. Um, but as Dave also mentioned earlier today with Lynn's talk and our, our one Outlook initiative, our goal really is to bring that not just in Win32, but in Outlook Mobile and in Mac as well. So do stay tuned for that. Great. And then going back to Sri, um, regarding Teams meeting scheduling, um, attachments, copy paste list of participants coming. Um, you might have better insight into that roadmap than, than I do. Um, I know that we are working on bringing parity between Teams and Outlook calendars, so um, we have a long list of improvements that we are working on. Okay, um, I see a question here also with regards to um, Outlook for Mac, and specifically, are there any plans for the Outlook Today screen on Mac version of Outlook? Are there plans for the Outlook Today screen? Okay, that's a repeat. So. Um, uh, this week we are uh, sharing out our news about the new Outlook for Mac. Um, there is uh, details there about the uh, My Day um, that will be shared out. And so uh, I do encourage you to look at the digital session that is very specific to the new Outlook for Mac and you'll be able to see what changes are expected there and when to be able to uh, actually experience those changes through a preview option that is going to be available in October. Um, and Victoria, I've got a question here on performance um, about Room Finder. Any performance improvements being made for Room Finder? Um, and they have not been using it lately, uh, but uh, want to be able to look at it. Yeah, so um, sometimes you may see uh, a little bit of slowness there on the Room Finder with the performance, and we are working on improving that. Uh, I will say that Microsoft, uh, we're using Microsoft as our tenant to sort of try this out and be better in performance is really great because we have a huge number amount of uh, conference rooms across our global offices. Um, so you can be rest assured, we're really testing the limits here and, and trying to improve against that. Um, so we do have that in our roadmap. We do know it's something we have to continue to work on. So thank you for the feedback. Great. And we just have one more minute left to our session. And um, again, I pointed over to Ross and said, what is the single most important change an organization can make to protect their Outlook users? That's a great question. The single most important thing that you can do within Exchange Online to protect your users is to enable modern authentication multi-factor authentication and disable legacy authentication. The simplest way to do that is through Azure Active Directory security defaults. Of course, in order to do that, you need to use sign-in reports to determine what legacy authentication clients you have in your environment so you can upgrade them and replace them with a modern authentication capable solution. But that will hands down protect your users. Great. Well, we are at time, guys. It, it just flew by. So I want to thank you for joining and asking some really great questions. And moreover, thank you for your participation and interest in Outlook. 
Uh, we're sharing here some very useful links for you to get uh, access to the digital sessions to learn more about what's new and what's coming. The first link goes to our virtual hub for Outlook, the other, the second for Exchange. And you can also find all our news at Ignite this week at the Outlook blog on the tech communi uh, community that summarizes all of our news. And so we really appreciate it. And you'll also find um, uh, a freebie. We can't physically give you anything this year, but we have put some online meeting backgrounds that might be fun for you to use and show your fandom for Outlook. So again, with that, thank you so much and goodbye. <laughs>